Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gershwan, and today we're going to be talking about the Xeno species known as the Megarachnids. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K lore videos every single day. If you have any suggestions about any other topic of Warhammer 40K, please comment down below. And if you enjoy our content, thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. But with that said, let's get into 40 Facts on the Mega. Arachnids. Early in the 31st millennium, the Imperium of Man encountered the death world of Urasarak. It was the 20th world encountered by the 140th Expeditionary Fleet, a contingent of the Blood Angels Legion. It was commanded by Captain Kittus Frome. Unable to translate the warnings from the orbiting satellite beacons placed in orbit of the world by the advanced human civilization known as the Interrex that warned approaching starships to stay away from the planet as a dangerous Xeno species had been quarantined there. Captain Frome ordered his fleet's entire contingent of three companies of space marines to begin landing operations to investigate and bring the planet into Imperial compliance. Due to the extreme atmospheric turbulence present on the world, all of the Blood Angels' assault craft attempting to land on the planet became scattered and were thrown off course, leaving the Imperial landing parties isolated from one another. The turbulent atmosphere also affected Vox communications and made it difficult for Imperial forces to coordinate their movements. Ground teams soon started sending garbled transmissions to the fleet's vessel in orbit, reporting that the planet was inhabited by an extremely hostile intelligent arachnoid species, later dubbed Megarachnids. The Megarachnids were an old enemy of the Interrex civilization. The Interrex was an ancient human civilization that merged with robots. To learn more about the Interrex, click on the link up at the top of this video. They had exiled the surviving members of the Megarachnids to the world they called Eurasarak as an act of mercy rather than committing xenocide as was standard policy for the Imperium. The Interrex stripped the Megarachnids of their interstellar travel capabilities, and to keep the aliens isolated on their new homeworld, the Interrex constructed weather control devices that created powerful atmospheric disturbances and interfered with radio communications in the shape of large trees across the planet in order to deter vessels from landing on the Death World. As reports of horrific combat from the surface continued, the Xenos were described as too numerous and formidable to defeat without reinforcements. These creatures had eight legs, with four legs used for locomotion and the other four ending in sword-like claws. Their entire bodies were covered in an organically produced metallic substance that made their claws so hard that they were able to easily cut through ceramite of a space marine's armor. Their hides proved so resistant even to bolt around. When this metal exoskeleton was breached, the megarachnids bled gray blood and had pink flesh contained within their armored hides. The creatures had no visible eyes, but were somehow able to find prey and organisms they attacked. All communication was done through clicks made from their mouths, which was described as razor-sharp metallic pincers able to tear through ceramide just as easily as their blade-tipped claws. Despite these commonalities, the megarachnids came in a variety of sizes and shapes. The Blood Angels encountered some that had wings, the ability to spin silk and spit cement, and enormous megarachnids, also the sites of titans, who likely played the same role in their forces. It also appeared that the race followed those megarachnids that were larger in size. The larger the megarachnid, the more control he had. Not long afterwards, the Blood Angels made urgent distress calls requesting immediate reinforcement and extraction. The last transmissions received by the fleet of the 140th expedition came from Captain Kittus from himself. He noted through clenched teeth, this world is murder. This name stuck, becoming the Imperium's informal appellation for Eurasarek. A company of Astartes from the Third Legion, the Emperor's Children, arrived in response to the Blood Angels' distress call. They made the same mistake during the initial assault as the Blood Angels, as their landing parties were scattered by the planet's powerful atmospheric disturbances. The company took heavy casualties, but just as the Emperor's Children were about to be overwhelmed, a relief force of newly arrived Luna Wolf Astartes from War Master Horus's own 63rd Expeditionary Fleet began to land through the breach in the atmosphere. The Megarachnids assaulting the Emperor's children were scattered, and a full-scale Space Marine assault on the hostile Xenos of murder began quickly. 
10 companies of Luna was, the remnants of the Emperor's Children's Company, tens of thousands of Imperial soldiers drawn from the Imperial armies, Byzantine Janissars, and several Lico Mortis Titans proceeded to level entire swaths of the grass-stalked forest and destroy every one of the atmospheric-altering trees they encountered, which steadily eroded Murder's atmospheric barrier. The War Master Horus, who commanded the Imperial Assault from his flagship, Vengeful Spirit, was very pleased with the progress that was being made. Some consideration had been paid to initiating a withdrawal from murder, now that the proper landing zone was available to allow an easy extraction of the troops, when an unexpected visitor suddenly arrived. The Primarch Sanguinius had come to murder to inspect the dead of his original Blood Angels landing forces that had been wiped out early in the campaign. With tears in his eyes, Sanguinius asked his brother Horus if he would join him in a campaign of vengeance against his foul Xenos. The War Master replied, Yes, let us murder, murder. Adding five companies of Blood Angels to the Imperial Invasion Force, Sanguinius fought alongside Horus against these aliens. Thousands of Megarachnids poured out of the forest and canyons of murder in an endless wave. Despite never retreating from Imperial Assault, the Megarachnids only continued to lose ground. By the sixth month of the campaign, it seemed that the Megarachnids would soon face extinction. When a fleet deployed by the Interrex arrived in system, to determine who had assaulted the Megarachnid's reservation world. Finding contact with the highly advanced humans of the Interrex to be a more pressing issue that needed to be dealt with, Horus ended the campaign against the Xenos of murder, and thus the Megarachnids had been saved from extinction for a second time by their old enemy. Imperial records don't indicate the final fate of the savage species, as the Horus heresy quickly began. And those were 40 facts on the Megarachnids. Now, before you click out, I wanted to give you guys a little bit more information if you're curious as to what happened to the Megarachnids. Now, this is my theory, my hypothesis. Uh, in the series of the uh, Beast Arises, within the first book, the Imperial Fist are said to be fighting a species of Xenos known as the Crones. Uh, they are described very similar to the actual Megarachnids. They're giant beetle-like creatures. Um, the difference between the Megarachnids and the Crones is that the Crones are described not so much as um, intelligent uh, in the way that a human would be considered intelligent. Uh, they are kind of more animalistic, um, but yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will talk to you tomorrow. Oh, if you have any questions, obviously, comment down below. Uh, if you have any suggestions, comment down below. And um, I'll talk to you tomorrow. This was Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>